if you are trying to get involved in the United States real estate market, right, you hear about all that cash flow we got over here in the good old U.S. of A., right? We're a little bit more than guns and burgers, folks. We got cash flow, right? So if you're in Switzerland and you're trying to jump in on that cash flow, and honestly, while you're doing it, I do suggest some guns and burgers because both of those are fucking sweet. If you're trying to get involved with all that, I'm here to help because that's what I do. I help people from Switzerland just like you invest in real estate. Let's go over the numbers on a deal right now. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%, that's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show today. Today, people, today is the day for all my people out there in Switzerland, right? Because I work with people everywhere. And today I'm working with my man, Hendrik. Dude from Switzerland who's all about that cash flow. He's like, Jay Wise, give me that cash flow. Give me some guns. Give me some burgers. All right, I lied. He didn't say anything about guns and burgers. I literally made that up right now. But you know what? I feel. I feel it in my soul. Like Hendrick likes guns and burgers. But that is not what we're doing today. We're not talking about guns. We're not talking about burgers. We're talking about being able to invest in the United States real estate market from Switzerland. And Hendrick's got a problem that I think a lot of you guys out there in Switzerland are going to have. U.S. banks are like, Ugh, no, you know what? Tough. We don't, we don't want to loan money to somebody all the way out there in Switzerland. If they default on their loan, way too hard for us to, you know, track them down, enforce it, get our money. Just from a ROI standpoint, it doesn't work for us banks, right? Anybody out there who's in Switzerland who's tried to get a loan in the United States, you're having a lot of trouble, right? Don't worry. I got a situation here. I'm going to solve that problem. We're going to look for a seller who's willing to be the bank for you, right? Who needs a bank when the seller wants to be a bank, right? So, Hendrick, you got a problem. You're all the way in Switzerland, and U.S. lenders are like, ooh, dude, Hendrick, we don't know about you, dog. It's tough. You're kind of far away, okay? That's your problem. Can't get financed. Seller, he's got a problem. He can't seem to sell his house. So we're going to combine you guys' problems and solve the deal. Now, this is a deal I looked at a little bit away, a little bit of ways ago, right? Uh, did not work out a, a close transaction with my last clients, but I think this is the kind of investment you want to try to go down. But here's the thing. Now, all these deals are going to go through, and again, just like the U.S. banks are going to look at you as somebody from Switzerland and, and see you as a higher risk than somebody who is in America, uh, sellers will do the same. So you do have to take all of that with a grain of salt because it's nothing against, you know, the Swiss and all that jazz and, you know, whatever y'all got going on out there and your democratic socialism and stuff. Oh, God, that was a that was rude. Honestly, that was rude. I. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Hendrick. You're a good dude. I didn't even mean that one. I it just came out of me. I can't I can't avoid making fun of socialism. It's it's like Tourette's, but like I make fun of socialists. I'm really sorry about that one. I actually totally dig what y'all got going out there in Switzerland, but but here's the deal. It's just a risk reward thing, right? If I am loaning money, I want to loan money to somebody who's much easier to track down, sue, and punish. And by being out of the United States, that is always going to be something that puts you at a disadvantage. So what you and I are going to need to do, Hendrick, is we're going to need to analyze a lot of properties just like this one and shoot off a lot of offers. You need to consider this like fishing. You want as many lines in the water as humanly possible, okay? So consider all that, and I'm going to leave you now with the footage when I originally analyzed this property. Let me know what you want to do. Hey, Steve. What are you doing? Oh, nothing. Just saving money on my rental property insurance. Oh my, Steve. Take me now. Holton Wise. Real estate investing made easy. Wow, I'm so glad I clicked that link below. Welcome back. Let's jump into the numbers. Let's really break this thing apart piece by piece, okay? 1148 West 11th, Lorraine, Ohio. 44052. It's been on the market forever. 
147 days. Why? Because it's not fucking worth 89,900, okay? It's it's not worth that, all right? That is too much money for a property in this neighborhood. If you buy that at 89,9, you are definitely overpaying. We only have two photos by the way, right? One, two, okay? That's all, that's all we get. We get one, two. The reason we only get two photos is because we got a long-term tenant in there. Long-term tenant. And I don't know how much they're paying in rent. All right, I reached out, but I didn't get an answer. And it doesn't matter, right? How much the current tenant is paying rent really doesn't matter, right? Because there's not a lot of people offering seller financing, number one. Number two, you have to understand that when you buy a rental property, the specific tenant that's actually in there is a blip in the radar, man. That doesn't matter. You're buying into the neighborhood. You're buying into the tenant base. You need to know what the thing's going to do long term, right? I got a lot of rental properties, right? A lot of rental properties. You're cycling through your tenants, man. You don't, like, buy a house and then you own it for 30 years and you have one tenant for 30 years. It's not how the game works, right? Don't focus on the person. You ain't buying that person, right? Focus on the market rent. The market rent of this property, $1,000, That'd be 12k a year, but you gotta account for the fixed and variable expense estimates and all that jazz. So after everything, all the dust settles, you're really only gonna make about 600, 6,440 a year, right? Now let's talk about price, price, price and terms, right? That's that's what the real thing is here. Price and terms, okay? This has been on the market forever because 89.9 is way too much. Truth be told, this property is probably only worth like 60. All right, this is probably a $60,000 house, okay? 60000 right? But it's give take. The seller's now willing to finance it because this seller's trying to extract as much value as they can. So it's give take, right? So we got to take a hit. We got to take our beating on price. We got to overpay. But then we win back on terms, okay? So what I would like to do because I'd like to negotiate a price with the seller on your behalf for 80 grand. My opinion, you're overpaying by $20,000, but we're going to make up for it by terms, right? I believe we have a reasonable shot at getting them to accept a 10% down payment, financed, the rest financed, 90% of the deal financed at 3% interest over 30 years. If we do that, what's that going to look like? Well, I gave you the NOI for the market rent, right? If we pick it up at 80, put down 8, get the seller to loan you the other 72, your NOI every month would be 537. Your mortgage to that seller is 304. That would leave you with a net cash flow after mortgage of 233. That would be a 35% return, right? So you could do a situation like this where the seller, they get more money than what their house is actually worth, win for them, and then the win for you is you're able to, if you can get the rent up to market rent, pull off a return that you couldn't have otherwise got if you're focused on trying to get a bank loan and you can't qualify, right? So it is a win-win, but you have to understand as the buyer, you're not yet up to that $1,000 a month rental, right? It could be a long-term tenant at like $700, 750 800 but it doesn't really matter exactly what it is because the end goal, I just gave you what the end goal is. And as a buyer who's trying to work out seller finance deals, right? You don't have a lot of options, right? Like that would be like a best case scenario, right? There's not a lot of people that are just going to loan somebody a 90% loan to value on the house, even though, it, again, it is overpriced, right? But you're able to make something out of nothing, right? When I first got started in my career, I was able to utilize regular financing, but a combination of that along with the seller financing, right? These are nice toolkits, right, to utilize in your investment business, right? Because here's the thing, what people don't understand, right? These bank loans, they're the best loans there are. But here's the thing, you can get these awesome residential bank loans. You can get up to 10 of them, right? 30-year fixed interest, low interest. Number one, you got to put down 25%. We're trying to convince the seller to give us better terms. Give us only 10%, right? The other thing, those amazing bank loans, you only get 10, right? I think I said that, right? You only get 10. I should say it twice. I should say it three times because that's really important. You only get 10 of those, right? But you know what's great about seller financing? It don't count. You get as many of these as possible, right? So whenever you have the ability to jump on seller financing, even if you got to pay a little bit more, you should do it, right? Because you're really, you're turning something out of nothing. 
Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.